I wrote a little speech. Um, I feel like there's a lot of more, a lot of people in this room that know Daryl and John, Daryl and Joan for a lot longer, and um, a lot better than I do. But as they say, you really don't know someone until you live with them. Well, I got to live with them for about six months last year. We, uh, Joan had calls every Thursday and Sunday, Thursday afternoons and Sunday evenings. So we, um, we'd go over the game plan for the next week and uh, she'd review the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, it was really, I, I mean, I felt truly honored to have the opportunity to be an insider in a presidential election campaign. It, it was really neat and was very enjoyable. Um, I have to keep reading. I can't think of a better person to run a presidential campaign than Joan. Joan set up the interviews, the conferences, the meetings, and the trips. But most importantly, she ran interference for Daryl. She allowed him to concentrate on what he had to do and took care of everything behind the scenes. So like I said, since I got to live with them for six months, I have some pretty good insights on some of the stuff that they did, and I'd like to share a few of them with you. Um, they came out to Colorado twice. The first time was a whirlwind trip. They got into Denver. I think Doug picked them up. They went up to Cheyenne, Wyoming for the 4th of July. But the, the most memorable one was the second trip they made out to Colorado. They came out for a third party debate. It was up in the University of Colorado in Boulder, what we affectionately call the People's Republic of Boulder. I've never been prouder of Daryl when he stood up there on stage between a communist and a socialist. And uh, the moderator and the host were extremely liberal. And you have to laugh because uh, they're asking tough questions, right? They're like, do you think we should have free tuition for all students? And do we, should we have loan forgiveness? And of course, you know, candidate number one, yes and yes. Candidate number two, yes and yes. Candidate number three, Daryl, said no and no. Um, well, you can guess how that went over. You know, we were on the University of Colorado. So, uh, but I loved how they set up their questions too. One of them went something like this. We have more people in our prisons than China and the Soviet Union combined. As president, what would you do to free all these people? Well, when it got to Daryl's turn, his response was, I'm pretty sure they did something to been put in there in the first place. So, <laughs> but that's how it went. Um, Daryl was gracious, he was polite, and he was extre extremely friendly. Um, and that's probably what Don, Joan and Daryl did best. Um, they really got, people liked them, and at that, at that debate, um, I can't tell you how he changed all their opinions. I mean, um, he really won them over. And that's how I felt what he did for the Constitution Party was that he won them over. He won people over to the party because of how he acted, his integrity. He didn't say what they wanted to hear. He answered the tough questions with honesty. And, and like I said, um, and, and just being polite and courteous, it really showed through. So anyways, I want to present this plaque to them. Um, you can't read what it says in here, and they probably won't be able to either, so I'll read it. <laughs> it says, to Daryl and Joan Castle, with sincere appreciation for your three decades of sacrificial service for the cause of liberty and for representing the Constitution Party in 2016 as a candidate for the office of President of the United States of America. And there's a little added thing at the bottom here, and it says they pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Anyone know where that quote's from? And that was uh, Cindy Redburn was the one who said, hey, let's, let's, let's put that quote on there. So that was very good. It said it was one of, one of her favorite quotes. And so, guys. Here you go. Jerry, we need you over there presenting the award. Oh, I was 
and he's just like, oh, that's right. Cindy, where is she? She's over here. This is over here. Um, let me just say that uh, everything he said about Joan is true. <laughs> uh, I told her when we started that uh, I would let no one else run my life except her. And uh, she's been running it for 39 years now. And I like to think she's gotten pretty good at it. Just when I think... Um, I th have a thought or two of my own. She uh, she cracks me. Um, but no, she really was uh, she was wonderful. She did uh, such a good job for us, and uh, it was a labor of love. I uh, I wish I could be president, but you know, the people have spoken, and I fell only 63 million votes short. But uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, if I had promised people that I was going to build a wall, the wall would be built. Thank you, folks. It's been a pleasure, really. It was, it was wonderful. Hi. How's that? I just want to say that... Um, I know he's my husband, so uh, you know I don't want to say too flowery a thing about him, but I do want to say this: that I've never been more proud of him. I, I honestly believe that he would have made a wonderful president. I honestly believe he was made of the right stuff. He would have needed a lot of people around him to support him. Uh, which any person in that position really does. It was just such an honor for me to see him do it. I knew he had it in him. Um, sometimes he didn't know he had it in him. Um, and I thank the party for uh, selecting him. And uh, I guess that's all I can say. Just very proud of him. Well, there are um, there are too many people out there for me to uh, to thank uh, without leaving out somebody. Of course, Scott uh, Bradley, our running mate, was a wonderful addition to the party. But there were so many everywhere we went. People invited us into our homes. We stayed there. Um, we stayed. Uh, we lived mostly in hotels. We are like. Um, Superstars at Hampton Inn now from seven months in them. But uh, anyway, we really appreciate it, folks. It, it was a pleasure to, uh, to work for you.